Hi, Georgia. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for, for being here today. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I am so happy to learn so much more about uh, your son, Naz Long, who's currently on a two-way with the Indiana Pacers. Yes. But before we get there, tell us, where was Naz born? Naz was born in Mississauga, Ontario, right here in good old Toronto. Yeah. What is his full name? It's Nazareth Mitru Long. Uh, we used to have, well, actually, no, Nazareth Jersey Mitru Long. His dad's name is Jersey. And he used to always wear his long jersey. And I'm going to throw that in. <laughs> and then to, to represent his mom and his dad, he changed his jersey to Mitru Long. So now he uses his full name. Okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. Where did basketball start for Naz? Well, believe it or not, his dad is a boxer, so we used to go to a gym, a local gym, and the boys used to box with the, my daughters as well. And the other side of the boxing gym was this little cor- um, court, and Naz used to kind of drift off and go and watch these older guys play basketball. And so we'd look for Naz and Elijah, especially Naz, and we'd be like, where's Naz? And there is Naz, first watching these boys. And then eventually, where's Naz? He's playing against these boys that were two times his height. So that's how it started. So we'd say, you know what, forget the boxing, let's see, let's see where this goes. And eventually he just, that's where it began, in the boxing gym, (laughs) at the boxing gym. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Where did he play? Um, He played, his first team was with CCAT, which was a Filipino league. And um, his first coach, you know, was Adoni. And he was an amazing guy, very strict, very fun and very loving. And that's where, his, that's where he started. That was his first, I want to say, house league. And that's where it took off. Mm-hmm. When did you realize that he had a love for the sports and that you should just take it a little bit further? When um, I saw him waking me up at 6 in the morning asking me to drive him to the YMCA. <laughs> and when I saw all his friends coming over with basketballs and Everybody, all they cared about and all they talked about was basketball, basketball. I remember when my son used to wake me up, too, and want to go play somewhere. I remember going to all these tournaments that, for us, were always away because they were never here Mm -hmm. in Canada. They were always somewhere in the U.S., so I literally had to get up at 6 a.m. and get on that road and get on that 10-hour drive to to tournaments, Mm -hmm. and to all these special basketball events. Did you experience that with Naz? I did, um, but thankfully, so we have the two boys playing basketball at the same time, Elijah being younger, so we had to kind of split. I would go to one tournament with one of the boys, and then Jersey would go with the other boy, the other boys, and then at times it'd be like, okay, we're going, we're going to be in London, so you guys drive to London, and then from London, you guys can cross the border, so it was always the plan we always had to plan and it always worked out but yeah we i a lot of a lot of the tournaments i don't remember because there was so many of them you know how it is sometimes i didn't even know what gym we were in we're like oh okay we're playing for this but yeah we traveled a lot over the years but i'm so grateful because i got to see so many different places because of the boys yeah it's funny you say that because i look back at my experiences as well where some of the locations that we went to, we never would have gone. Mm-hmm. Never. There was just no reason, or we never had a reason to go to certain cities or certain Definitely. states. And yeah. here now, it's like, wow, basketball is bigger than what we think because it starts as community and then it branches out mm-hmm. as, your, as your child develops. Yeah, definitely. And you know what? Um, being in the basketball community, it's such an amazing thing because people don't realize you don't it's not just about basketball i have met so many amazing people where i would literally say hey charmaine hey so whoever so who's going where and i would just drop off nas at some <laughs> location and they would just take off and take him wherever they were going so this journey has been i mean yes you go to a lot of different places but it's who you meet along the way as well so those memories to me are so precious, right? Of course, because you meet parents that have so much things in common with you mm-hmm. 
and you share your experience with them and you talk about a lot of things. And I too had a lot of things, a lot of experience with a lot of parents, but the thing is that they were always in the U.S., so I never had anybody that can take him. That's true. <laughs> I didn't have any teammates that could drive him really yeah. after he left to go yeah. to the U.S. because they were it's just true. always, every game was an away game. So <laughs> even home games were an away game for us because. It's yeah, it's funny. I don't remember. My, my husband loved to travel. So he was the one that would probably be the one to go to the States. We have a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to stay I have daughters right. too. So, you know, we kind of like planned it out where, okay, he travels with the boys, I'll stay home. If it's local, I'll travel with the boys right. and he, he stays home. So it was a give and take, right? Right. But when they were in Canada anywhere, I would travel with them if it was driving. Yeah. Let's fast forward now and get to high school. Okay. Where did he play? So he played for Father Michael Gates. That was his first high school. Then he went to... He went to Montrose, yep. and then he went to Finley. And then we wanted him, because in the States, you know how you get your credits, but then in Canada, you need a certain other credits. So I had asked him, since he had that free year, to come back and get his Canadian diploma. It was important It was important for him, and it was important for us. So he came back in that one year. He played for uh, St. Martin's. And it was amazing. We had him home for the year. And, um, you know, I mean... He, so he had that experience before he went off to college. So are, when you're saying that he came back, are you referring to being eligible, like he had to get his courses? No, no. He actually graduated from Finley, and he had that one year where he couldn't go to prex. There was some, you know how it is in the States, a little bit different. So yes. he had that one year where he can come home or go to college. So he came home, and he did that one year in high school, grade 12 here, and he graduated. He got his diploma here. Iowa State. Oh, yes. How did Iowa State come into play? Well, we were, um, Naz likes to kind of say, hey, mom, dad, want to come with me to practice? Uh, So-and-so is going to be there. <laughs> so I guess Coach Tony called him and said, um, Naz, um, Iowa State coach is going to be there with, you know, to watch some people play, most, most likely come, you know, to see you play, to watch you play. So we went there. And the coach, Hoiberg, and TJ was at the, um, one of his practices. And we got into, you know, we watched him practice. And I'm like, what the heck's going on here? Now all of a sudden we're in this room and they're telling us how they, they love him. They're interested in him. And, you know, they want to come down and, and visit. And I'm like, okay, wait, this is going a little too quick. Let's slow it down. Anyhow, he went to Iowa, the Iowa State, by himself for a visit. And right. Melvin Edgem was there which was a plus for us because Melvin is an amazing human being. And, I mean, Iowa State is beautiful. But it's not like, you know, oh, uh, a fast-paced city. It's country. People are amazing. Um, so when Naz calls us at, like, I don't know, 12 o'clock at night, hey, I'm in the gym shooting, and this is where I want to commit. I'm like, no, no, no. You got to come home. We got to talk about this. You can't just commit while you're there. Mom, Dad... I'm telling you, I'm in the gym, and I'm feeling it. This is home. This is where I need to be. So we're like, okay, you know what? Do it. And he committed. It was like he went there, and boom, he was, he was set. He, that's where he wanted to be. How long did he play with Iowa five State? Five years. Five years. The five most amazing years of, I mean, I felt like I was in college. <laughs> you go there, and the Hilton magic is real. You, the place rumbles. The, the fans are amazing. They love, when they see, we, when we walk through the mall with Naz, it, it's not like, okay, let's go to Walmart and, or Target and pick up something. They'd be like, hey, Naz, Naz, autograph, Naz, Naz. Naz, can you sit with us? Pictures, pictures. So Jersey and I would just go and say, you know what? We're going to just go into the restaurant and sit and we'll order food for you. People love you. They, they come out to every game. They support you. They, fans still text me send me messages that's you know that's love i always say it is love you're bringing back some memories for me when you're saying that mm -hmm. my son played for unlv and oh, yes. it was the same thing everywhere we would go everybody knew who kem was we go to the store we don't we go down the street mm -hmm. we're walking like in Walmart, anywhere in Vegas, <laughs> yeah. and everybody knew who he was. And like you said, it's it's there was so much love, just like an outpour of of 
of just support. Yes for him so I completely understand what you're saying with Nas too and and I as an athlete that must feel fantastic amazing amazing he he glowed it, like he glowed I don't know if I, he he was always he was happy like he was always ready to play you, you know what it's like, of like course, they of love course. the basketball college basketball is such a different animal there's nothing like NCAA nothing. ball yeah nothing uh, yeah I like, wholeheartedly agree yeah, on that yeah I watch, like, I still have my, my favorite players on the low. Like, I love my yeah. sons, but I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I see them on in the NBA floor, like, I'm not going to say a few names, nope. but there's one in particular that they call him the flopper. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> I love him. I watch, I love watching the way they develop from NCAA to basketball to, to NBA, G League. It's an amazing, amazing experience. Isn't it great for us because we get to look at these kids that we're playing with our with our sons and now to see them develop further playing pro basketball yeah. uh, somewhere on definitely. the planet definitely and it's just so funny to see them at the age of 17 and now they're like 26, 26 and 27, 27 and yeah. they're they're grown men and it's just like we were there when they yeah. were just yeah. It's true. They're amazing. They're they're talented, amazing, and it's it, like you said. You go onto Instagram and you see everybody. You know, Spain, Greece, wh- wherever Europe, everywhere they are. And it's like, wow, this is amazing. We knew these kids. Yeah. We watched them grow. You know, it's an amazing experience. What made Naz decide to uh, declare? Well, he was um, graduating, mm-hmm. and. Um, I mean, you know, talking to his agent at the time, and we thought this would be the best thing for him to do. Yeah. What was the process of you choosing an agent for your son? It was a simple process. He was family. So at that time, we chose the agent based on knowing him for the longest time, trusting in him. And it was very simple. It wasn't it, Naz. Uh, we have a lot of trust in Naz and his decision. So he came to us and, you know, it was it was it was a no brainer kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Naz went undrafted. How did he handle that on draft night? Okay. Well, on the outside, I can't, uh, as a mother, you know what it would be like. As a mother, it's, I felt like I didn't get drafted because you, you wait for that for so long and you look at your kid and yes, it's your son, but you're like, no, no, no. My son is as talented. What is going on here? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it a hundred percent real. You know, Mm -hmm. I was like, Yes, this person's good, that person, but my son is, you know, and then I'm like, okay, you got to take a step back because it's not about you. This is about <laughs> Nas. Um, he was in town. He, um, he actually went out to a draft party for Dylan Brooks, his friend, mm-hmm. and he, he went out with all his friends. He handled it well. He seemed like he was, I don't know what was going on inside of him. I, I have, you know, I can imagine, but he handled it with grace and he was very, um, he said, hey, you know what? It didn't happen for me easy, so it's okay. I got to keep going. That's what he said. It was the next day woke up, we made breakfast, and we went out, you know. But I don't know what what went on inside of him. So what did his agent at this point now um, suggest to do moving forward? So you didn't get drafted, but this is what we're going to do. I guess people reached out to his agent and said, hey, we want him to play here in the G League and so on and so forth. So his agents, we had the option to go overseas. And um, he said, you know what? I want to give it a chance to play here. And if it doesn't work out, I always have overseas. And overseas is amazing as well. But for him, his dream was to try to get into the NBA. So his agent suggested go into the summer league and see where that takes you. So he did that. And the summer league, he played with the Sacramento Kings. I yes, believe, he did. Right? Okay. Yes, and how did. did he like playing with that organization Amazing. for the summer? Amazing. Um, Naz is a kind of um, guy that he fits in. He kind of blends it with anybody. Hey, you know, um, you're a tough coach. I can relate. You're, you know, you're down to earth. I can relate. He, you know, whatever you tell him, it's his job. So he's very professional. So yeah. It reminds me of my son too because I used to tell him, "Get in where you fit in." Very true. Yeah, That's he a, used to I'm play. Gonna get in where you fit in. I'm oh yeah, you can that. have that for free. <laughs> Thank so. you. <laughs> you know, <it's, laughs> that's good. But it's true because you you look at these boys that are hungry mm-hmm. and they want to to play. My son played I don't know how many summer leagues, and he 
he played for a couple of organizations and he was trying to find that good fit. And it's hard when they're told, okay, thank you very much for coming for these two weeks and you just have to move I forward. I never knew that. I never, I thought, I honestly, because I don't do the research on others, I just, I thought that he just went into the league. I didn't know all of this. Nope. He sure did, and his route was, wow. is, yeah, his route was quite long. Getting the, he did the, the whole circuit, the G League, the Turkey, okay. Greece, so and Orlando out. Magic. So this is where we're going nice. to tell each other, absolutely. Okay. So Naz, he he was engaged in two uh, two way contracts. Mm-hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? So uh, with Utah Jazz, yeah. um, he came home for Christmas. So I don't remember the date. I want to say that he came home for Christmas that morning. And I went out with the girls to pick up some groceries because we're going to cook. And then he calls and says, hey, mom, you got to come back home. I just got called up. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, they give me a, you know, my two-way, come home. So we went back home, said goodbye, and that was it. He got his two-way. And, um, I mean, you know, he grinded. He was playing G League, and he was tired because you go up, you go down, you know, and you got to be there. Um, and then now he's with the Pacers. Okay. And same thing, he was... With the G League, he had an amazing night, a great performance, and then he went home, went to his, his room, called him, hey, we need you guys to come up. Him and Brian, his um, roommate, so they had to wait, find their way to the airport, Uber, this, that, but they made it, right? And this is a second, his second two-way. So how does he handle, well, now his second two-way, because now he's with mm-hmm. the Indiana Pacers, um, how does he handle that, though, waiting for that call-up? You know... <laughs> It's strange because I would ask him, I said, how do you feel? You know, my, my thing is, are you okay? My kids are like, mom, stop saying that. Are you okay? Is everything okay? <laughs> he, he seems like he's just professional. It's like, hey, it's my job. Put in my stuff. I got to go. You know, it's whatever it takes. So he's, he's good. Well, he's, he's good. been recently called up. Yeah, he's been, and he's there. And he's, he's you know, he's, he has his minutes and he's, he's performing. He's, he's doing good. He's out there playing his role. So, yeah, he's doing well. Well, my son is on his way to Indiana right now. So it's on. <laughs> so good luck, Ned. Yeah, that's right. Kevin's coming. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Oh, it will be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll be texting you in a couple of days. You better and, believe yeah, it. Yeah. I'll, I'll be taking pictures when I'm smiling when they win. I'll be like, <laughs> selfies. Yeah, selfies. Okay. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> you have another son, Elijah. And he plays for UNLV, which is where Kem played. Which, yeah, which I went to visit two weeks ago, yes. and I didn't know Kem played for. And there is Anthony Bennett, and then I'm like, hold on a second, <laughs> I didn't know Kem was in this school as well. Yes. So I was, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And like you said, UNLV. They have fireworks before the yeah. boys come on. They're like they're walking into the onto the court and firecrackers and fireworks and they're going boom boom boom. I'm like this is flipping amazing they love their they love their basketball yeah you know Vegas is such a great place um there's not that many professional sports there's no professional basketball association there right so NCAA that's it you know the UNLV is the basketball team so the love and the sport that they have at the Thomas and Mac is phenomenal amazing amazing yeah. So tell me, Elijah and Naz, because you have two boys that are playing basketball. Yes, sir. How competitive are they? Oh, boy. So how competitive are they? Um, I have more hair than you do. Oh, I'm <laughs> taller than you are. Oh, I can jump higher. Oh, look, I can jump off the three stairs fast. Everything is a competition. I can get to the door before you can. So competition is from the minute they... The minute they could talk to each other till now, it's always competition. But it's uh, uh, they have amazing connection. They have they're they're very connected. Like I don't have to worry about them if something's going on with Naz. You know he'll call Elijah and vice versa, and they call each other. So, so it's like a healthy competition. It is. It is. That, Thank that brotherly God. love, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Have they ever played against each other? They have Iowa State, so they um, they matched them up in Iowa State, and they played against each other, and it was very very cool because Elijah would go and visit him, so he knew Monte and George and all those guys, all his teammates. So when we got there, it was we were I don't know twenty five people, uh, family members. We mm-hmm. all showed up. We had T shirts made and all that stuff, and it was cool because we had both teams. 
uh, on our um, mm-hmm. on our shirts. But, it, you know, Naz said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to keep it friendly. But then when Elijah was kind of like, you know, able to handle his own, you saw Naz got a little serious. <laughs> you know, all the boys from Iowa State had to, like, buckle up, say, well, okay, they're, here, they're not here to mess around. They're here to play. <laughs> So yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm 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 very grateful that they gave us the opportunity. Yeah. How do you balance supporting both of your kids? Because here you have two kids playing at the same time. How do you balance that? So that Nazareth difficult. is older, the oldest, the eldest. So he's more he's not more he's not much more mature than the rest of them. But Naz kind of likes to do things on his own. Where Elijah and I, Elijah's my youngest. So we've always had this, this. I don't want to say different connection. My, all my kids, we have an amazing connection. I love my kids all the same. But, you know, you have like a different connection with each. And with Elijah, uh, we can talk every single day. We text each other every single day, which is kind of it. You know, it's like, hey, how you doing? Love you. That's it. Naz, I'll go like two, three days and like I'll send them a hello or what, vice versa. But they're both very different. So there's not, you know, people say, oh, there's a balance. There's never a balance. I've never, I'm, I, I have never been balanced in my life. I am trying to balance my life now with all my kids grown. So, yeah, you try. Well, of course, and that's all you can do, right? Yes. How do you handle adversity as a family? Oh, uh, we stick together. We show love, we support, we argue. Well, we, we don't like to call it argue because we're not allowed to scream in my house. <laughs> I'm serious. Right? You know, oh. you, there's no, if you, if you want somebody, you got to go find them. So there's never been like loud arguments. We debate. And to be honest with you, I've learned to say, you're right. And they're not right. But, uh, you know, that's the best way to resolve it. But we just, we just stick together. We, th- there's 10 siblings. Naz has nine siblings. Wow. So they, trust me, there's a lot to go around. So they, they're very tight knit family. So how does he fight for attention? Well, you know, when he comes home, they, they always say, oh, look, Naz is coming home. The fridge is full. I swear <laughs> to God. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth is home. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this. We're going to get four square meals because I cook and cook and cook. So my dogs will say, oh, my God, we're going to eat now. We're able to be in the kitchen That's with food. <laughs> So if you ever want a good cooked meal, just find out when Naz is home and, you know, you're going to get it. <laughs> you heard it, everybody. <laughs> find your way to George's house when Naz, when is, Naz home. is home. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a joke. They always say all his friends are like, oh, look, we're all going to eat, you know. But Well, I'm just going to look and see when the schedule. Pacers are playing uh, the Raptors. <laughs> and I'm going to be home. on the next flight down to Toronto, watch <laughs> the game and go to your house yeah, and eat with Naz. It's fun. Yeah, no, that's what they always say. They always say Naz is home so we can eat. Nas got called up the other night. Yes, he did. How'd you feel about that game? Oh, amazing. Amazing. I, I was, you know, I was really, really happy for him. But he deserves it. I'm like, it's about time. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it was, it's good. It's a good thing for him. And the, the fact that the minutes he played, he played well. He showed that he's an all-around player. He's not just, you know, at the corner with the three-pointers, right? He's, he's point guard. That's where he started. He's play point. So it was hard for him because, you know, he went from point guard and then he went to college and then they trained him to be the three-point shooter and he was a sharp shooter with Matt Thomas. So, you know, now he's going back to his roots, I find. So it's like I watch him like, yeah, there's the guy I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. You know, it's great with him being such a diverse player. Yes. Right. You know, you, you look at your kids and their experiences and what they go through and it just seems like he is just progressing. And that's what you want. Mm-hmm. When you mean... You know what I mean? Like when you're looking at your son on TV, because I'm assuming you don't go to every single game. I, I don't go to a lot of his <laughs> games, unfortunately, and I feel bad about that. I am trying to change that, but uh, because of work reasons and family, um, but I do watch every single game. If I'm not home, it's on my phone, it's on a laptop, it's wherever I can, yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. So tell me, how excited are you for his future? Oh, boy, I... I I'm, I feel like it's my future. <laughs> I, I, every game, every, every time he calls me and he tells me what's going on, you know, I talked to this coach, I talked to that coach. I went to Indiana and I met um, the Pacers family. I had brunch with all the ladies from Indiana Pacers, the moms, the, the organization, and they're so amazing. 
and um, they treat every single player like they're worth a mil millions and millions of dollars. It's not Onaz is a two-way or, or whoever it is. They treat everybody equally. So when the, I was so excited. Being there, they made me feel like, you know what, we got great things that are going to happen. So I'm excited. I don't know what the future holds, but I always tell my sons, especially my youngest one, this too will pass. When there's a bad thing going on or, you know, he doesn't have a good game, I always text him. He's like, I know, Mom. And I always say, no, this too will pass. What you feel right now is not going to last. It's going to get better. So I'm just excited about the future. Do you ever lie in bed at night and say, I have two kids that are playing basketball and potentially two that can end up in the NBA? I do. I, um, to this day, honestly, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't feel real. I, I'm, you know, like I, people are probably like, oh, you're, they, they don't know me as, oh, you're Nas is not even Nas, you're Nas is mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, I am. It's Georgia, <laughs> you know, but I don't mind. It's good. Like, you know, it's, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. You know what it's like. You lay there sometimes you're like, wow. I watch Elijah's games, um, later because Yes. They're three hours three behind. Hours so sometimes when I can't watch the game, I actually listen to it. So what I'll do is I'll turn all my lights off and I'll listen to it in the dark. And I'm like, that's my son they're calling. That's Elijah Mitru Long they're calling. He's on the court. So it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, it's surreal. It's always like it's the first time, eh? Always. Always. <laughs> Nobody can, like, you can't even explain that feeling to anybody. It's no, amazing. But my heart jumps every time yeah. I see Kim on TV. If I see articles and I'm like, wow, this is my son. Yeah. It's just so, like I said, surreal. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> okay, Georgia, tell me, what advice can you as a mother give to another mother of an amateur player? Make sure you're there every single step of the way, not just for basketball, school. School's where it begins academically you have to you have to make sure your grades are up there make sure you you're 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 on your children even though they don't want like I'm not saying you know yell at them but what did you do today who do you know you know know their circle know you know who they as you guys call it, run with you know um if you're gonna pick a school if he's gonna pick a school you gotta pick it for them with them not for them with them right. um and I know this is not, I mean, I'm, I'm torn when I say this, but I'm going to say because I've missed so many years. My son's left home at 15, 15. My son, my oldest is 26. He hasn't been home for 11 years. I miss those years when he was 15. To, you know, like he's still a young, he's a young kid. Um, so I would say make sure that it's right for them. Don't think because he's going to go to prep school, oh, this is it, he's going to make the MBA. It's not for everybody. He can stay in Canada, finish his you know, high school, um, go into programs, go out to do workouts, and find his way to the NBA. As, as a mom, I would say make sure it's a good situation for you, your children, and your family. It's not for everybody else. It's just, you know, and surround yourself with a good group of people that can help you along the way. That's what I would say. And looking at Naz and Elijah's, careers yes. to date is there anything that you would do differently uh yeah i would be more present i i don't think i would change anything they've done i think i would change a few things that i did you know um i have you know as mothers people say don't have regrets my regret is not being not being more vocal not being there more for them vocally like you know yeah i would have changed a few things i did but as far as for them, I think, I think they just, they did everything just right. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of all my children, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Georgia. Having you here is an absolute pleasure. I wish both of your boys nothing but love, support, great luck. Thank you so much. It was, a, honestly, it was a pleasure. I've just met you and I feel like we know each other for years <laughs> and I'm going to follow Ken as well. 
Saturday, though, we're going to have to take it from him. And I'm, I'm going to say, you see, this is this is where the competition with moms I'm come in. I'm texting you on Saturday. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> it was a pleasure, honestly, Wendy. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming today on Thank Courtside Moms. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Honestly, thank you for waiting. So the Pacers did beat the Magic 111 to 106. But Cam played great. So it was a win-win for both Georgia and I. And, of course, Naz and Cam. Catch you next time on Courtside Moms. And thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Courtside Moms and make sure you subscribe to the podcast.